It's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back to my German min-maxing series. Wow. Okay, so I've had a little bit of time to reflect on some of the comments you guys have been dropping on my video. And um, at first, I thought I was in the right and you guys were wrong. There's a lot of comments about, like, why aren't you doing an Operation Sea Lion? Uh, why are you making an Atlantic Wall? Um... Now, this guy that I'm using right now, which is this version of the bin maxing that I'm showing you right now, is a guy that KLS made that he put on the Steam uh, about three months ago. It was about an August time. And that's the kind of guide I'm working with. There's my own interpretations on there. I'm not literally just copying and pasting his guide. And I even had a conversation with him before I made this series about uh, what parts I, that I thought I was doing wrong, basically. Um, and I asked lots of questions, I think, things that I didn't quite understand and whatnot. And for the most part, I've been trying to be as faithful as possible to that guide. With limitations, of course, because I've got AIs with me. And a lot of people don't seem to understand the mid-max, uh, why I do it. The reason why is I want to have at least a maximum of eight episodes, that's a maximum of four hours worth of game content, explaining a full multiplayer game. Where if it was an actual multiplayer, a real one, playing at four speed and three speed, uh, then this game would go on significantly longer, maybe 10 hours, maybe 12. It would go on a lot, lot longer. And plus, there'd be a lot of kind of fastballs being thrown at me as well, things we don't expect that kind of goes against the game. And plus, my commentary wouldn't be as good as well, uh, being the fact that I've had to concentrate on the game, actually play well as well. And then sometimes I might have to scrap the whole video, which is just a massive waste of time. So just for consistency reasons, I play a single-player game against the AI, I explain everything that I'm doing, and therefore it makes it into a nice, short, condensed video that's really good for YouTube. Trust me, if, if the video... It's one of those moments where people always go, why do you need a real multiplayer game? And then I make a multiplayer game series and put it on YouTube, and nobody fucking watches it. It's one of those moments where there's like a really loud voice of these people screeching really loud, I want this X content, Dave, and I give them X, and the video doesn't perform very well because it, the, the silent minority, the silent majority, are the ones that I'm actually appealing to, not the ones that screech really loud in the comments. Oh, I've got that off my chest. So just a few things I want to go over. The Atlantic Wall. Apparently no one does that anymore. So it looks like forts in the old days seemed like they were incredibly strong. And now they're not as strong because if you concentrate lots of firepower with soft attack and uh, with breakthrough and with air supremacy into a level 10 fort, eventually you will be able to push through it. There are limitations if it's a mountain on the other side and if you're crossing over a big river. Like getting over to the Maggio here... Um, Maginot. Maginot, am I saying that right? Keep, keep, keep correcting me. Th this is like a nightmare. You never wanted to push this. So mountains and f level 10 forts and a large river. This is an impossible maneuver. Where if it's pushing into planes, like if there was a level 10 fort here, this is really doable. Um, and with air support, you, you have the ability to push through. Especially if you... Better if you get them by surprise as well. That kind of helps too. So all these forts are doing here is they're delaying. So if someone was to land in one of these, uh, instead of them landing instantly within a second or two, it might make it three or four or five seconds. So I suppose the advantage with force is you get a little bit more reaction time. Uh, but the downside is you're throwing a horrendous amount of production into this. Because let's be real, applying about seven or eight forts, six or seven forts, you're at the cost of one military factory. So the current matter at the moment I say this because I I feel like I'm 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 giving an overview of every multiplayer game when in a lateral fact I'm only giving the multiplayer games that I've been exposed to. But the, the current matter, is, as I'm aware, is not to make coastal forts, uh, but it's to make uh, more military factories. So to fill literally all of Germany with military factories. And you're probably thinking, but what are those military factories going to do? Because that's a comment that someone gave me. You make military factories, and then what are you going to spend it on? Because you maxed out on tungsten. And you need medium tanks and self-propelled artillery and artillery pieces, which all require tungsten. So that's going to be pointless, right? So you won't actually be able to spend anything. Well, the, well what you do is you'd spend it on planes. You make more refineries for oil and rubber. And you get more uh, tungsten, uh, sorry, more aluminium from uh, Hungary or from Yugoslavia. And that way you can just have some insane plane production. 
Uh, I was under the belief with the 10% discount that the UK gets and the 10% discount that the United States gets uh, for fighters, they would be able to catch up with Germany. But under this current strategy that I'm aware of, ignoring the Atlantic Wall and going for military factories, you would have significantly more planes uh, than the Allies, and there you would be able to do a sea line. And apparently, it's quite a known strategy that the Romania will do a sea line against the UK, which can be done relatively easy just after the fall of France, too. Um, I guess that's concentrating air power and landing with a big force of Romanian troops, combining their commando trait, this guy, and the infantry guy, which apparently is too stacked. I thought they didn't, but apparently they still do. I, I, as far as from my perspective, that seems like a bug, but apparently that is fair play, apparently. Apparently! Also, as well, in the multiplayer game, the would-be player playing as Nationalist Spain, and he would invade Portugal to take the tungsten, and that way you could Germany could trade everything they need with Spain to get all the tungsten they need, because there's a massive limitation on the amount of tungsten we've got. So what I'll do, just for this game, just to explain to you, I'm going to fabricate for Nationalist Spain, and I'll bring them into the war, and then they can annex uh, Portugal. Um, what would normally happen is that Spain would annex them and declare war on them after when the civil wars ended. Um, and in that case, I believe they won't join the Allies, so that means it'd be completely annexed and there'll be a peace treaty. Yeah. Have I explained that all correctly? I think so. As far as I'm aware, just to give you a, a step back for a second and give you the grand scale of the meta at the moment, it looks like the Axis still have a massive advantage based on the way that I've... Uh, the way I'm currently playing as Germany, basically. Yep, are we good now? Yep, we good. Uh, and also, someone wanted me to explain the strategic bombing thing. Apparently, there's a thing right now, if you ma mass-produce strategic bombers, I'm assuming it's USA, because they get a 10% discount for strategic bombers, um, you can bomb most of Germany from the UK, um, and, let me get this right, and use fighters, which get an escort bonus, making the, the bombers literally, most cases, unshoot or downable. Uh, the counter would be radar and static AA, um, and also heavy fighters. Uh, but the heavy fighters can't fight against the like regular fighters are escorting, so at the end of the day, they don't actually shoot that many down anyway. And static AA is ridiculously expensive uh, at 2500 a piece, which I think is really, really overpriced. Yeah, really overpriced. Are we currently working on radar? Yeah, we are. So we will expand on that. There we go. So, yeah. So just to take a step back for a second, just to explain a few things. Yes, I've gone for the Atlantic Wall strategy. That currently is now obsolete. What you normally do is invest that into military factories and let them land and then repel them back to lose the divisions. Uh, sea line is possible uh, under the new meta. Uh, but unfortunately, most multiplayer games, I say most, the games that I'm aware of, uh, they have a restriction on when you can perform sea line and it has to be something like after 1941. So I guess I'm adhering to that, maybe, possibly. Uh, and also, Spain would annex Portugal to get more tungsten and you'd be making more planes with the extra military factories that you've got. Have I explained everything? Is there anything missing out, guys? I know I've spent eight minutes of this video just explaining some of the comments that I've been receiving and I feel like it's only fair that I explain my mindset why I played this way. And um, if you have guys have got any confusion of what I've done or how I've played this game, feel free to drop a comment and I'll uh, upgrade it and push it further. This is not the end of the campaign, by the way. I'm just going to derp around now, have a bit of fun, and enjoy myself. Because at this point, uh, the Soviet Union would be defeated and you'd be able to gobble up all of their factories in the Soviet Union for Germany. And yeah, you become your factory power would be so insanely huge. Uh, that you'd be able to just outnumber the planes in the UK and do an eventually do a sea line. Which is pretty much what I'm doing now, right? We're right, gonna go here, gonna go here, gonna go here, and then you uh, guys are gonna go here. Here, 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 there we go. I think I'm gonna supply problems again as, as you do. Make sure you're repairing those roads, as always. Looking for areas that have low supply. Looking for over 100, really. If it's not over 100, I want to add an extra pip of supply on there. Uh, well, pip of infrastructure. Yeah. I'm going to continue making my Atlantic Wall. I know I've just said a moment ago, like, well, Atlantic Walls isn't a thing anymore. Well, I know it's not, but the truth is I'm just going to do it for the purpose of this game. Because I started, I might as well finish. 
I, I, I don't actually feel the need to make any more planes because at this moment in time, I have currently have more planes than everyone. So even then, um, it's not that relevant. Uh, one, two. Oh, these guys are going to invade. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about this. Um, all right, you guys are moving in here. We're going to encircle this guy. We're moving in. Yep. Yeah, boom. They're going to escape now. I'm like, no, they got overrun. That's okay. Um, all right. Here. Yeah. No, I'm fine now. Go here, 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 and then go here. So just doing the funsies now, just going for as many uh, encirclements as possible. Also, one of the strategies where strategic bombers are banned as well is that you can do the, the escort strategic bombing strategy, bomb the UK, north and south. And completely obliterate all their airports. Uh, what I've been told is when you put bombers on strategic bombing, they seem to prioritize targets for in airfields. When airfields are over capacity, it reduces their efficiency down to by a hundred percent. Literally, it makes if an airbase is overfilled, it reduces its efficiency down to zero percent, which I think is the most ridiculous nerf ever. It feels a little bit too strong that, but there you go. That's just that's how the game is programmed. Uh, so in that case, if you want to target nations like Italy, which have two air regions, or the UK, which is south and north, Scotland's is relevant too, but not as much. Um, you can do that and literally obliterate the whole nation. Same with um, Japan too. Literally all of their industry, 90% of their, most of their industry. If you ignore China, the when they've annexed them, obviously, is based on the homelands. And it's one air region. So if you send strategic bombers from Guam, you can pretty much flatten all the industry in Japan in a small area. Which is a little bit strong. Well, Germany's got one, one, two, three. And then I guess you can include Czechoslovakia's four regions. So they, they, they're a little bit more difficult to bomb, as you could probably imagine, because there's going to be a lot more regions you've got to bomb, and it's difficult to tell if you've completely demolished that area. There goes Yugoslavia. There's all that sweet aluminum. I'm going to go here and help them along. Adolf speaks against Portugal. Oh no, Adolf. We'll work on that radar. You guys are moving, but if you look, the speed's pretty low due to supply, mainly. Being a boom pocket. The delicious pocket porn. So, I've had quite a few requests. I, I understand the main issue with mid-maxing videos is that a lot of people are annoyed the fact that I'm not playing them as if they are actual multiplayer games. And I hear you. I understand what you're saying. And I would feel, in a certain way, the same kind of... Uh, the, the same kind of feelings that you guys are feeling. That it kind of feels a little bit cheap. You feel like you're cheesing a little bit. And I, and I actually agree with you. It does. So, what I probably will do after this... Um, I more than likely will make a video... Of me playing an actual multiplayer game as Germany, and I'll try and recreate what I'm doing right now to see if I can remake it in a multiplayer game. Who knows? It might be a colossal failure. I might get beaten up, but hell, that might make it more fun, make it more tense, right? You guys all get to laugh at feedback game. It's like it's not as good as he says he is. <laughs> oh boy. Why feedback? Why do you lie? All right, go here. Oh, yeah. One needs you to be aware of as well. If you're moving an airbase into a low supply area, they suffer from a massive penalty as well. 83% penalty for air efficiency. That is just so mad. I launched an assault here and they've failed miserably. Failed. I'm actually really surprised that they managed to most of them managed to escape. Out 
Go here, go here, go here, you guys go here. Alright, done. Yeah, they must have escaped, didn't they? That's the reason why I feel like if you're going to do a pincer... Oh my god, I hate the German marching music. I've heard it so many times now. Um, yeah, when you... Uh, uh, we can declare war on Portugal, which we'll do. And we'll call you into the war against Portugal. No, not both wars. Oh, balls. Never mind. Doesn't matter. The war against the Soviet Union is about to end anyway. Uh, I'm in trouble, a little bit of trouble with, with convoys at the moment. We're having trouble with tungsten too. This is light self-propelled artillery. We're still making this for some reason. Don't ask me why. Uh, at this point, we're going to make fires and close air support. All right, there we go. Then we can assign them on. In fact, what we'll do, actually, we'll make two more layers. That way, when we get the factories from the Soviet Union, we'll just assign them downwards. That'll be fine, then. All right. Yeah, so, as I was just saying before, I think the most effective way... Um, do, do, do. The most effective way of getting in circumvent to avoid the enemies from running away, which just plays more, it supplies more to the AI than anything, uh, is to try and make two pincers, one from the left and one from the right, to punch in and meet in the middle. Um, that seems to be more effective than I've spotted. Alright, everyone move here. The fall of Sebastopol. Nice. Alright, you guys go here. Ooh, naval invasion. Oh, we have a, a fleet here getting engaged. We've got naval bombers. Northwest Germany, we have an invasion. For some reason, we have no troops positioned here anymore. How did that happen? Why did we have... Okay. So the area where we have the highest coastal force is getting landed on, and there's nobody there. <laughs> Okay. All right, Dave. Uh, now this is why we cannot have nice things, okay? Japan wants to join the war against the Soviets. Nope! Because you'll take on my delicious war score. My tasty, delicious war score. It's all mine. All right, you guys are going to go here. You guys are going to go here and here. All right, whoa, 35 divisions. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. All right. Can we go here? They're going to get stuck in Bremen now, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Got them. Now, the tanks are probably sitting in reserve here, aren't they? No, they're not. Oh, no. Are they? Are they? Can you stop fighting, please? What are these consisted of? These are engineers, lots of artillery. Classic artillery infantry. I actually can't believe this. Oh no, we are. We're getting rid of them now. No, it is working. We've got just the, the breakthrough is just so insane that. Oh, they're in, putting the planes here as well. That's annoying. Um, okay. I think we can probably put you guys here. And then you guys here too. Yeah, the lack of air coverage is probably hurting our own, our chances here. All right, move here, and I don't want to engage them. Terrain, enemy air, air supremacy. That's fine. All right, what are we doing again? Um, our supply is good now. Kind of. Could be a little bit higher. Focus on the repairs first. Actually, some of these are in Germany, aren't they? Brittany. I don't care about Brittany. Leave Brittany alone. Uh, Hanover. I don't care. I'm not sure if there's been a recent change to the game, but it feels like artillery, when it's in concentrate into one area, seems to do more damage to infrastructure. I'm not sure if that's a new thing or not. I'm not sure. Uh, that's good. Alright, so what we want to do now is go here. Go here. Go here. 
go here, and then go here. And the rest of you guys are going to do the exact opposite. You're going to go through here. So this is what I was talking about. This is like a, like a double pincer from two different locations. The infrastructure is going to get completely wrecked now. Are they actually holding them back, though? What are we doing? So encirclement penalty, low supply, in multiple combats. That's not doing much for their stats, is it? But there's so many divisions. So, 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 so very many. All right, now we need to get some tungsten from Spain. Actually, we're gonna kill it all, get everything from Spain. I think this is how it's usually done. I think sometimes when the conference fires, uh, Germany might take this state of this one. <laughs> Um, justification of the United States against it. We're at war with the United States, aren't we? Yeah, we are. I think it's a uh, national focus that causes that. Why are the where are the tanks gone? Are you guys moving? Yeah, they are. Using the infantry to hold them in place, the tanks to get around the back of them. Same old, same old. You've seen this a million times. We're going to go for the mech 3s now. Tanks here. Go here. Go here. Go here. Can we not do that, please? Oh, they've all retreated through that little hole. It's kind of annoying. Hanover, Brittany, I don't care. Hey, they closed it. Well, hey. Uh, I'm trying to think at this point what I could do. Do we... We're suppressing. That's what I want them to do. This is the horse, isn't it? Can we do an engineer here? Yeah, we could. 20 width. Engineers. We can do that, so why not? Yeah, why not? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm good with all that. Get rid of those. Don't need to know about suppression. Low manpower. I'm working on it. Some people were asking me about the casualties and whatnot. So here we go. So this is the Soviet-German war. Barbarossa. 20,000 guys lost. 205 Romanians lost. Uh, 7.72 million. This is just... I know, I know some people in the comments are probably getting really high rate right now. Like, this is not a fair test, Dave. This is not fair. This is the AI. This is not a human. But this kind of just shows how great, if you're doing circumments, are. Uh, one of the mistakes in most multiplayer games is everyone will charge with their full front line. The aim is to use your tank divisions to make encirclements to minimize casualties and then encircle their troops. Most of these aren't actual casualties. These are like losses. It should say losses here. I don't know why it says casualties. But most of these are actually probably from encirclements under the surrendered. They're not actually dead. But there you go. And this one is almost a quarter of a million for Germany. 1.1 million for Italy. Wow. And there you go, there's all the other numbers. UK is getting beaten up the most. I bet they're on service. Yeah, they are. Yep. Need to capture Africa again, aren't we? Let's just do this invasion that we planned here. I think we need some air control here, don't we? Do we need air control? I think we can do this with just an air... Northern France. Let's see if they, if they have any luck. Oh, we're getting bombed again. 100% of bombers being disturbed. Nice. Alright, so that's the convoys. I'm fine with that. So can't I do this without having some ships positioned here? I don't think I can, can I? The hardest part is getting your ships out of the Baltic Sea. So one of the things... Oh, actually, this is not something else to put in the comments as well. It's like, why don't you take out Denmark and Norway? So the only reason why you take out Denmark and Norway is to lock in the Danish belts. So this area then becomes full German control. And that means you could trade with Sweden for all their tungsten and be not interrupted uh, by convoy raiding in the Baltic Sea. There's two things here though. If, if the Allies do to put, put their navy in the Baltic Sea, 
uh, they are going to be a massive risk of your planes if you control this region. Uh, so that's an issue you need to be aware of. Um, and two, if the Lenly, if Soviet Union asks for Lenleys, it will go through here. And sometimes keeping this open is a good idea because what you can do is Germany is intercept all the convoys that come through here. So that's something else to be aware of. Are these on? Are they repairing? We probably should have some air control here, probably. Oh, this is out over capacity. I didn't even realize that. Interception. Do, do, do. The reason why I've got 100 stacks and 200 stacks is the 200 stacks are air supremacy and the 100 stacks are interception. So that way I, I never get them confused. There is no confusion. And put you guys in this area. And hopefully hit convoys. So that's just two things I think is kind of interesting. I don't actually know if you let if this area is locked out. I don't know where where Len leases go to the Soviet Union. I think they might go to the Fastapol. I'm not sure though. I think I'm not sure. Not 100 percent certain on that one, boys. Not certain on that one. Some of these uh, forts are banged up. Could also go for repair as well. That makes repairs really quick. At this point, you usually see them on air production to get that 20% discount because it's just so crazy big. It's a big discount. So there are some ships here, some old Polish ones as well. What we got going on here? We got 62 close air support, so we're able to do some good damage. All right, uh, what we're we gonna do at this point? Oh, we we're gonna invade here, weren't we? We need some submarines, though. That's the problem. At this point, I suppose you'd tell Italy or Spain to get air supremacy here, because <coughs> uh, if you got air supremacy in this region, then you could. Uh, Move your tanks and try back Corsica. At this point, you're taking back Corsica and Sardinia is not really helping you, I suppose, because this area is locked down because they can't go through here and they can't go through here. So any troops positioned in the Mediterranean aren't getting supply. Well, that's not actually true if you think about it because they've now got this connection here and they've got the port to go through here. So that actually isn't the case anymore, but it's just something to be aware of. All right. All right, everyone go back to their normal positions. See, we've got a lot of uh, decent defense for our cavalry here, which is good. I think we're producing too many of these. I think we just might want to kill one of these. Now, we'll let this last one train, then when we're done, we'll move from there. So go for that, go for this, go for that. Go here. Naval invasion in France. Can they break it? No, they're instantly defeated. They're booted out straight away. A lot of people ask me about the sweet spot for forts too. I think the sweet spot is, is three. With three levels of forts, you're able to purchase them really quickly and quite efficiently and cheaply and quickly. That's the words I was looking for. Cheaply and quickly. And it also gives you a nice uh, minus 30, 45% penalty for the enemy attacking as well which I think is really decent um, and then when you build forts after that sure you, you're getting more defense uh, but overall you're paying significantly more and it's going to take you a lot more time to, to construct them so in the long run it doesn't seem to pay off as well after that point uh, I think what we're going to do is tell this guy to attack here I'm going to tell you go here 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 and then you are going to go here, here, and here, and here. All right, let's see how effective this is going to be. No, actually, not all of you, just one of you. I don't want to attack with too many because I actually don't want to push them back. I just want to get around the back of them. Can we please go in, boys? Got them. So it seems to be more effective against the AI if you do two pincer maneuvers. And you can instantly squash the divisions. Squash? Is that even a word? Squelsh? Squelsh? Two, three, four. 
And then you guys can railroad to here. Portugal's capitulated. But they are in the Allies now, so... Not a massive difference to... It's not, the, it's not the most it's not the most effective outcome because as you can imagine uh, we would prefer if we could get a peace conference with the Portuguese then we get all the tungsten and we don't have to deal with suppression but there you go whatever see a lot more tungsten than we had before and I think Spain's got a lot more too they could always go free trade and get access to all the tungsten or they could just hand over the state control they could go. Ask for control and give them control of that state there, which has got all the tungsten in it, which is doable. Done. Got him. Baltic Sea. What's this? This looks like a land lease as well. You can only can you check land leases? I think you can, can't you? The Soviet Union is land leasing to the Soviet Union for support equipment. Interesting. Gives me an idea what they're lacking at that point. I'm not sure how that helps me though, but it's nice to know. Nice bulge here. The more tech. We will tech the bulge. One Two, three, ideal again. You want to really go around the back of them, but eh. Railroading around the back here. I go here. No, go here, then here, then here, and then there you go. These are slightly more risky maneuvers. You don't want to do this if you knew that the, the Soviet player wasn't already beaten up and defeated. At this point, you don't really want to be pulling off this kind of risky maneuver. Got him. And they're dead. It might also be worthwhile to note that depending on the position of their planes, it might give you a bit of an inkling where they're going to launch attacks. If it's a smart player, they'll probably position their planes at the very last minute and not show them and give away what they're going to do. But it's difficult to say. Uh, yeah. Control in this Baltic region. 11 ships. You've got, remember, you've got control of this strait. Oh, you haven't. Actually, we haven't. What am I talking about? I was about to say that you've got, if you had control of this strait, you know that everything in here you could eventually eliminate. Uh, the only way that the Soviets could repair in Leningrad, I suppose. Got another extra tank division, one here. And then I guess another one in Amsterdam. As always, working on them repairs. Trying to always keep above 100 suppliers seems to be a sweet spot. I guess what you could do is you could add up the total amount of suppliers. So it's about 5 supply for a tank, so 5 times 8 gives you a bit of an idea. So you need at least 40 supply. But then you have to take into account the infantry divisions too, which are quite high supply because I've added lots of artillery onto them too. So there's, there's quite a lot of variables to think about there. Uh, I guess we can make more artillery. 2, 3, 4... And more Panthers. Alright, I think we'll pull these guys out just for a brief moment because I bet we're losing so many to attrition. So here you go, 42. That's the supply just for those tanks and nothing else. Actually, there's some planes here. So that might just be... Yeah, so it's 40. Oh, yeah, it's just shy of 40, I suppose. And then the planes are pushing up even higher, I suppose. Yeah, that's cool. At this point, because you're winning, I suppose it's smarter to split up the tanks and push them in different directions as well. Because you never really want to give them a breather. Uh, 
In this case, I'm playing against the AI, so I'm playing a little bit differently. Probably shouldn't for the... Ah, yeah, I'm, I'm probably not showing the best kind of my abilities here if I'm... Uh, I'm not playing as if it is an AI. Dave's forgetting the rules of this campaign again. That's actually a good idea to check the list of planes as well. Get a bit of an idea of anything more of a capacity. Lacking range, that's fine. Lacking range, range, that's fine. I'll try and get a bit of circumvent around this region. Gomu. Alright guys, if you enjoyed this episode, remember to like and subscribe, drop us a comment below. I do listen to your guys' feedback, every comment I do read and I try and reply to. And um, yeah, if you've got any insight to anything I've talked about on this series so far, or any of the comments I made at the start of this video, please reply to me because I want to know more about what's going on. Apart from that guys, I hope you have an awesome day and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye bye.